How to draw a fraction. Draw fractions using area models, rectangular area models. Start by drawing a fraction that represents one half. Draw a rectangle. Draw a line down the middle of the rectangle to partition it into two halves. Shade in one side to represent the fraction one half. Drawing fourths. Draw a fraction that represents three fourths. Repeat the same steps that you took to draw the halves, and then draw a line down the middle of each half. So partitioning each half and half creates fourths. To represent the fraction three fourths, shade in three of the fourths. Drawing eighths. Draw a rectangle. Repeat the steps that you took to draw halves and then fourths to create eighths. Draw a line down the middle, then draw a line down the middle of each half to create fourths, and then draw a line down the middle of each fourth to create eighths. Shade in five of the eighths to create the fraction five eighths. Next, we'll draw thirds. After drawing your rectangle, find the spot that is less than one half but greater than one fourth and partition your rectangle there. And then the second line, you'll draw a little bit past the halfway mark to create thirds. Shade in two of the thirds to represent two thirds. Using the thirds, you can create six. Start by drawing your rectangle again and partition your hole into three thirds. Again, a third is greater than fourths but less than a half. Then to make six, you're gonna partition each third in half or draw a line down the middle of each third. To represent the fraction four six, shade in four of the six. Another way to draw six is to again, start with your rectangle. This time partition the rectangle in half. Then for each half, you're going to partition each half into thirds. Again, to represent four six, shade in four of the six size pieces. Next, we'll make twelves. You can use your six to create twelve. So we're starting with thirds, then making six, and then turning them into twelves. So again, find the places where you can draw lines to create thirds, and then draw lines down the middle of each third to create six. Then draw a line down the middle of each six to create twelves. Shade in eight of the twelves to create the fraction eight twelves. Let's move on to fifths. Instead of drawing a line down the middle of the rectangle, you, wanna, you want a piece to be represented in the middle of the rectangle. So we're going to draw the lines on the side of that middle piece, right before the middle of the rectangle and right past the middle of the rectangle. Then on the sides or on those larger pieces, you're going to draw lines right down the middle of those side pieces. This will help you to create fifths. Shade in three of the fifths to make the fraction three fifths. And just like the other fractions, we can use fifths to create tenths. We can double it. So create your fifths again, starting with that middle piece, that solid piece in the middle instead of a line, and then drawing lines down the middle of those outside sections to create your fifths. Then draw lines right down the middle of each fifth to make tenths. Shade in seven of the tenths to represent the fraction seven tenths.
Draw fractions using area models, circular area models. Let's start with one half. Draw a circle best as you can and draw a line right down the middle vertically, shade in one side to represent the fraction one half. Another way to represent one half is to draw a line going across horizontally. And then again, shade in the top or the bottom part to represent one half. Now let's create fourths to represent two fourths. So we're gonna draw a line vertically down the middle and across going horizontally to create fourths, then shade in two of those fourths to create two fourths. And it could be any of the four in the circle you can shade in, it doesn't have to be right next to each other. Now we're going to create eighths. So we're gonna start with our halves and then partition the half in halves or in half to create fourths. And then we're going to partition each fourth in half diagonally by drawing like an X, a large X across the circle. And now we have eighths. Shade in any four of the eighths. They can be next to each other, but they don't have to be. Let's represent three six. Start with your circle. Again, these don't have to be perfect. We're just showing students how to model our fractions the best as we can. We want it to look reasonable. So we're going to draw that circle and then draw a line straight down the middle. And then we're gonna draw like a wider X than we did with the eighths to create our six and then shade three of the six in. Now we're going to use the six to actually make the thirds this time. So we're gonna do the same steps to create the six by drawing that line vertically down the middle and then the wide X. But then we're gonna kind of erase every other line. This is just one way that you can represent thirds until you get the hang of where those lines should actually go for thirds. Another thing to think about is drawing the peace sign. If your students know what the peace sign looks like, that's another example or a way to draw thirds in a circle. Then shade in two of those thirds to represent the fraction two thirds. Now we're going to draw fractions and we're gonna be drawing improper fractions or fractions greater than one. So let's draw a fraction that represents five halves. So we need to start with one rectangle, partition it into halves, then a second rectangle that would make four halves and then we need a third rectangle to get to five halves. With three rectangles partitioned in half, we have six halves but we only need five. So make sure you shade in five out of those six halves. The next improper fraction or fraction greater than one we will represent is 13 six. So draw your rectangle and then we're going to partition each rectangle into six equal parts or six. One hole gives us six six. Two holes will equal 12 six. We need 13 so we need to draw a third hole partitioned into six six. And then again to get to 13 we shade in all six from the first hole all six from the second hole, and then one six from the third. Let's represent 18 fifths. There's five fifths in one hole, so we know we need at least three holes to make 15, and then to get to 18, we need to draw an extra hole. Partition each hole into fifths, and then shade in the total amount that you need. So all five fifths from the first hole, all five fifths, from the second hole, all five fifths from the third hole, and then three fifths from the fourth hole. This represents 18 fifths. Draw fractions using area models to represent mixed numbers. Let's go back to circular models. We wanna represent one hole and two six. So we draw one circle and shade it all in to represent the one hole. And then we need another hole drawn as a circle. And we're gonna partition that hole into six equal parts. So remember, draw a line vertically down the middle of the circle and then that wide X for your six. And then we're going to shade in two of the six. Now, 
Next, let's represent two and three eighths. So we know we need three holes. Two of them, we're gonna shade in the whole circle. And then that third hole, we're going to partition into eight equal parts because that's what the denominator shows. So a line vertically down the middle, a line horizontally across, and then an X partitioning each fourth to create eighths and then shade in three of the eighths. Now let's represent five and one fourth. So we know we need five holes. So we're drawing five circles and shading them all in to represent our five holes. Then we're gonna draw a six hole and we're gonna partition that hole into fourths. Our denominator shows it should be partitioned into fourths. Draw a line down the middle vertically and across horizontally and then shade in one out of the four. Another option for drawing fractions is using grid paper if it's more difficult drawing freehand on a whiteboard or blank paper. So we're gonna use grid paper, you can use any side. We're gonna draw the fraction 7 8 So we're gonna start following the lines on the grid and we're gonna represent eighths. So we're going to count out eight lines to make our rectangle and then partition them into eight equal pieces or eight parts. And then our numerator is seven, so we're gonna shade in seven of the eight parts, or seven of the eighths. Using grid paper is a really good place to start with students to help them get comfortable with representing their fractions. Let's move on to an improper fraction or a fraction greater than one. We're drawing six fourths, so we know one hole is gonna have four fourths. So now we need to make another hole for another two fourths so that we have a total of six fourths. So there's eight fourths altogether, but we only need to shade in six fourths. Next, we'll represent four and two thirds. So let's start with our whole. So each whole will be three thirds because our denominator in the fraction is thirds. So a whole is made up of three thirds. So we have four holes. Let's shade in all of those holes to represent that we're using the whole thing. So one hole shaded in, two holes shaded in, three holes shaded in, four holes shaded in. And then we need to draw a, a part that shows the two thirds. So we're gonna draw a fifth hole, partition it into thirds, and then shade only two of the thirds in. Four and two thirds. How to draw a fraction using number lines. Using that grid paper again, we can draw a straight line across and we're going to start by labeling one endpoint zero and the other endpoint one. Then we're going to partition the line into four equal sections because we wanna represent fourths. So you can do four spaces on the grid paper or you can just have four equal spaces. So for this line, every two squares equals one fourth. Once you create your fourth, have your students label everything or just label it to the point to represent the fraction. So starting at zero, we're gonna jump from zero to the first tick mark, that's one fourth. And from one fourth or from that first tick mark to the second tick mark is two fourths. And then again, make sure students can show you where two fourths is on that number line. Next, we'll represent five twelfths. So again, start with a line, create your endpoints, zero on the left, one on the right, and then partition or make a tick mark right down the middle. And then we're going to partition each half into thirds. That will create six. So three on one side, three on the other, there's six equal parts. Now we're going to partition each six in half to create twelfths. And now we need to identify where five twelfths is. So we're gonna start at zero and then draw an arrow to represent a jump. Each jump is one twelfth, so we wanna go all the way to five twelfths and then label that. 
How to draw an improper fraction or a fraction greater than one on a number line. This time we're not using grid paper, we're back to blank paper, or if you have a whiteboard. So we're gonna draw our line again and then draw our tick marks. So our first endpoint is zero, our second endpoint is four because we need seven thirds. So with our four holes this time, in the middle is gonna represent two, and then when you partition each side in half, that first tick mark on the left will be one hole and the tick mark on the right would be three holes. Then we're going to partition each hole into thirds and we're going to go from zero all the way to seven thirds. So you can have your students count with you, zero, one third, two thirds, three thirds, which is the same as one hole, four thirds, five thirds, two, which is six thirds, and then seven thirds, and then go back and label them. Now we'll represent 10 eighths. So since it's a fraction that's larger than one hole, we know we need at least two holes. So we're gonna partition our line into two holes. So zero is the first endpoint, two is the second endpoint, and then in the middle, instead of it being a half, it's gonna be one hole. Then we're going to partition each hole, each side, into eighths. You can start by partitioning it in half, then into fourths, then into eighths. And then we're just gonna count out to 10 eighths. And then go back and label them. Again, you can label or have your students label the entire number line, all the tick marks, or just the point to represent the given fraction. Last, we'll show how to draw a mixed number on a number line. This time we're using lined paper to draw our number line. We have one and five, six, so we know we need at least two holes. Our first endpoint is zero, our second endpoint is two. Down the middle is gonna represent one hole. Our denominator tells us that we have six equal parts in a hole. So for each side or for each hole, we're gonna partition it down the middle and then on each side of those halves, we're gonna create thirds. All together we'll have six. So start by labeling the first hole all the way up to six, six. And then your second hole goes beyond one hole. And you're gonna label it using mixed numbers instead of fractions greater than one this time. And then count all the way to one and five, six. In our final example, we'll represent three and one half using a number line. Our first endpoint is zero. Because we have a number that's greater than three holes, our last endpoint needs to be four. Partition the number line in half and then partition each half in half. Those tick marks will actually represent whole numbers. So we have one hole, two holes, three holes, and then four. And then because our fraction shows halves, we're gonna partition each hole in half. Starting at zero, we'll count out each half. One half, one hole, one and one half, two holes, two and one half, three holes, and then three and one half is where we need to get to.